She said they lived on soup because you can make soup out of whatever scraps of whatever food you can find. And you can keep adding water to stretch it. At a point in her young adult life, with all these children and no one providing anything but abuse, she learned about the religion of spiritualism. And she started talking to God, and she started strengthening that communication with her loved ones in the world of spirit and her spirit guides. And she started receiving guidance. This remarkable young woman saw a need and filled it. She saw a need for a place that adults, too mentally ill to be on their own, a place where they could live in a home-type atmosphere, not a nursing home, not a hospital. How on earth would this woman who could not feed her children ever be able to provide something so wonderful for her community? She asked Spirit. Did Spirit plump down half a million dollars? No, that would have been way too easy. But Spirit nudged her about who she could talk to, how she could learn This woman listened to spirit, and she worked. She worked. She walked a lot of places. She would uh, beg and borrow a ride for other places that were further away. She learned on her own how to write grants and apply for grants and started getting them. Because she had no medical training, You better believe she had to meet with everyone from the governor on down. Do you know this woman now has the most beautiful 30 resident home you could ever hope to see? Her husband takes the residents out fishing. There's a pond on the property. He takes them to the movies and they go bowling. And they don't have staff turnover. Everyone in that facility has been there from day one. And I remember when she started this facility, no one got a salary for the first couple of months. But these people saw this wonderful potential to help other people. And they worked together. And they worked Look at what a gift, what a gift this incredible woman has provided. If she's not doing spirit's work, I don't know who is. And nothing was given to her. She worked hard for it. Across the country, there are spiritualists who have just accomplished amazing things. They don't sit back and wait for spirit to present it on a silver platter. That's for sure. But they do ask for guidance, and they listen, and they go to work. Friends, each one of us has a purpose in this life. Each one of us. And I talk to people who are so confused, especially a lot of younger people, and they don't know what they want to do. They don't know what they need to do. Well, they need to get started on something. Because it's only by experience, it's only by learning, it's by meeting other people that we find out where the needs are. And then we can find out how to help fulfill those needs. This doesn't mean you have to remain in poverty all of your life. Quite the contrary. If you're going about doing spirit's work for the right reasons, you will be rewarded. 
There's no question. There's no question. It's hard to be patient. It's very hard to be patient. But as long as we're moving forward, then we are progressing. If we're just standing still, we're not getting anywhere. And there are so many people who are afraid to take that first step. They're afraid they will fail. Well, there are very few CEOs, doctors, lawyers, dentists, any other profession, there are very few who did not have setbacks along the way. But they kept at it. And as spiritualists, we know the importance of keeping at it. I see so many of you here today, and I know what you do here in the church. You don't ask for recognition, and you certainly don't get paid. But you do it for your love of spirit. You do it for your love of the church and the church family and the community. I see many of you here who have careers of serving others. Health care workers, teachers. Ministers, <laughs> we have so many blessings in this church, and I don't want you to look at your neighbor or the person in front of you and think, well, yeah, they're a blessing, me maybe not so much, because each and every one of you provides your loving spirit your encouragement, your talents. Each one of you is every bit as important as anyone else in this room. One of the people, while I was away, commented that I never call it my church. They said, you know, we've noticed that. Most ministers talk about my church. And I said, it's not my church. It's our members' church. I'm just one of them. And I've bragged a lot on all of you, I've got to say. And I heard wonderful compliments about our written program, because I showed it all. And I got wonderful compliments about the website. So many had already seen it. And I tell them we've got this wonderful group of younger people <laughs> who know about these things and are working together. And it's just the most incredible, beautiful gift any church could ever have. So I just want to say thank you to everyone here because each one of you adds something quite magical in your very own unique way. God bless you.